the worst part of this is actually just all of it. Woo! Oh no, I forgot my tools. <laughs> it's literally the one thing I need. <laughs> anyway, well, how y'all doing? <laughs> Hi, welcome. Welcome back to my channel. I would assume there's like no one new here. I haven't posted in about eight months, ten months. I don't know. It's been a minute. Listen, I just got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. Actually, let me start by saying hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Haley. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. If you're not new it's so nice to have you again well i don't know if i'm like back back but it has been a minute since i posted literally like eight months ten months a really long time i honestly just kind of lost the passion for it i've been getting comments from people on tiktok talking about girl where have you been like you haven't posted in so long i miss your videos and then people tweeting at me asking me where all my videos went because i privated them because i just i don't feel that great about my content i'm gonna be published my book comes out this year which is insane last time i was on here i had just announced my book seal and it was still like over a year away but now we're in my debut year 2023 was wild because i had so much to do surrounding my book editing it to go on sub and then being on sub and just being stressed all the time and then like selling my book and then having to do contracted edits which are a whole different beast and on top of that i was working a full-time job you know my day job and i still had to like write other books and it was a lot i said i could barely find time to read and like this is a booktube channel it's like i don't know what i'm gonna do. like what am i gonna talk what am i gonna talk about but it still truly was one of like the best years i feel like i i accomplished so much and i had a great time like i visited my friends and i did so many cool things like it was a really great year and it just happens that booktube just it just wasn't my priority anymore even before going on my little hiatus i was like i just don't really feel as passionate about it i love the community so much and i'm so grateful for all of you but it got to a point where i was like so stressed about it even my computer was stressed like every time i would try and edit she would be on her deathbed like literally about to explode so we'll see how editing this video goes yeah it's just it's been a wild year but i'm excited for everything that's to come i have my final cover and my book is available for pre-order so if a sapphic vampire book set during the harlem renaissance sounds interesting then you can pre-order you can click the link in my bio and you can find it and buy it wherever you want or you can add it on goodreads i honestly am just grateful for the support either way like y'all have been there for me from day one which is amazing the reason why i'm doing this video is because I want to set up my new shelves. I bought these like a month or two ago now. I want to have like a romance shelf. Maybe I could organize it by color. I don't know, like that's the fun thing about this is we're gonna explore and we're gonna do it together. Realize I don't have any of my tools. So I'm gonna have to go and get a hammer or something or a screw. Last time I built my shelves, y'all saw that video? It was a stressful experience. Okay, I, I was not having a good time. I messed it up. I'm nervous about building these, but these shelves are smaller. You'll see, they're like the miniature version of my big shelves, but I think they're gonna look really cute together. I'm building the Billy bookshelves from Ikea, the mini Billy bookshelves. Oh my gosh, it's been like eight months or 10 months, I don't know. Do I seem calmer, less stress, less, I don't know, at war with myself? <laughs> The worst part of this is actually just all of it. If you ever are like, oh, I should get shelves, I should build shelves, don't do it. Or have someone else do it for you. Ooh, I'm about to start sweating, but I don't know that I... Girl, <laughs> I'm already, huh? <laughs> yeah, see, they say to put it on a rug because you can break it otherwise. Mind you, I had this on a rug last time and I still broke it. Can you guys imagine me with a power drill drilling anything into my walls? The house would burn down somehow. I would find a way. You guys excited for Arcane season two? Now that is my favorite show and it finally is coming with season two. I've been waiting for this for a millennium. Just want to say that. So what have you guys been up to? Tell me what your favorite reads of 2023 were and what your most anticipated reads of 2024 are. Probably my favorite was They Said This Would Be Fun by Eternity Martis. It's a nonfiction book about what it's really like to be a black woman at a PWI 
and honestly totally encapsulated how I felt. The thing is that I've been going to PWIs my whole life. My university was like my high school on steroids just because it's like so much bigger but it still is like predominantly white. That's not to say that that was like my only experience. Like I met so many great people. Honestly some of the people who I still keep in touch with now are my professors. Like the people that I keep in touch with the most. They're amazing. I owe so much of my current writing career and just my writing to them now because they just inspired me so much and they're just amazing like i truly learned so much at college i don't know why i'm talking about college now like i've been graduated what else is there to catch up on oh maybe i should talk a little bit about publishing so i feel like some of you guys might be interested in that i feel like i did talk a little bit about like being on sub and how stressful that was first of all it's <laughs> hard to just like let your book go and know that like you don't have any say nothing you do can like make the process go faster because like, the thing with publishing is it's slow because like people have to like read the book you know so when you're on sub it's like you're literally just waiting for all these editors to even get to your book and then actually read it and then be like am i gonna move on with it like should i take it to my team who then they also have to read it so like it's a long process sub can be really fast for some people it can be super slow for some people i was really lucky because i was only on sub for like a month and a half yeah i was very lucky at the end of the process it was kind of hard like just seeing like why people rejected my book because a lot of my rejections weren't even like there was no sustenance <laughs> A lot of them were like, it's just too dark for YA, like it's too heavy on like the race stuff. One passed because the editor who we submitted to, like she really loved my book and wanted to acquire it so she brought it to her team and I guess like her, her boss was like, we already have a sapphic black author. When I say that people are always like, what? what that's crazy and I'm like this is just the game like this is just how publishing is like they do that all the time like that's what happened to Angie Thomas they got so many rejections because they're like oh we already have Jason Reynolds like we already have black authors so like you know we don't need another one and it's crazy because it's like our stories are not all the same we all have a different story to tell something different to bring to the table and the fact that they can sit here and say that when they have about a million straight white authors it just is crazy to me. Currently where I am now, I finished all my major edits. I did my developmental edits, my line edits, my copy edits. Next up, I'm assuming I have past pages, which is when I like see the layout of my book and I can, it's like the last time I can change anything. Here's the thing that like people don't talk about, okay? Your goals are always moving. Like for the longest time, all I wanted was to be published. And you know, the second I got my book deal, like, yes, I was so happy. But then it's like, there are these other things rolling in that I start worrying about, like, my cover like is my cover gonna be good is the editorial vision gonna be good like is is my marketing gonna be good is all this stuff like new york times bestseller list like so many things that's like I, I shouldn't even be worrying about these things because it's like so far in the future you know and it's like borrowing grief from the future like i don't want to do that but the goalpost is constantly moving especially when you're in publishing and you're like comparing yourself to others like i've never been one to compare myself to others until publishing i feel crazy most days but i'm trying to get better at just not doing that to myself because it just makes me depressed and anxious but i think i'm doing better but one thing that's been really exciting and and wild is whenever people comment on my post they just tell me they're like yeah i pre-ordered i'm like what do you mean what do you mean what do you mean <laughs> you <laughs> bought my book i'm very excited because i love this book a lot i'm just excited for people to see themselves in my book. I know I haven't built anything. Let me let me get back to building. I feel like for a long time I kind of like dissociated from the fact that I was going to be published because yes it was like my lifelong dream and it still is my lifelong dream but then sometimes I actually think about it and I'm like <laughs> it's kind of nerve-wracking. When I first like got my edit letter and was doing edits I literally would just have panic attacks all the time because I was so nervous about like just not making the book perfect and you know i have ocd so like perfection is a big thing for me but i know i literally was having panic attacks <laughs> i was like this is not sustainable i'm doing so much better now like really really grateful for that but at first it was really hard to adjust to and i was talking to other debuts they're also just in shambles and i'm like is this what i have to look forward to <laughs> at the end of the day i just love writing and that's really all i want to do I was thinking of doing more like video essays on other things like talking about certain things like in the industry or I don't know like I, could, I really could talk about anything because the thing is I also just want to write essays on these things like black horror and why it's like so 
almost like revolutionary and important. This is gonna sound weird, but cannibalism as a metaphor for love. Love is hunger, canine poetry, I'm really into that. I don't know, if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, then you would see I talk about it every two seconds. Female rage, especially like black female rage and intergenerational trauma, like ugh, so much stuff. These are all things that I put in my books. You guys want to know something fun? I used to do carpentry when I was carpent carpentry. Oh my god, carpentry when I was a small child. Literally when I was like six, I did carpentry. I remember I made I made a little stool, a little table, and then I hammered myself and I had a little blood blister. It's crazy though. They were really letting us do anything because I remember I was using a saw. I'm like, what business does a six-year-old have using a saw? Ooh, what if I told y'all some fun facts about my book? That's exclusive to my YouTube channel. There's a cat in the book and his name is Hendrix and he's a Russian blue. He's actually just a gray cat because originally he was Russian blue and then my copy editor was like, yeah, I don't think you should specify the breed because like they might not have been there at the time and I was like, and that's real. So then I just made him a regular gray cat. He is sassy and he's a little demonic. Not an actual demon. I had people ask me that. He's not an actual demon, but he is a mean cat, at least to Layla, who is my main character. It's dual point of view. Both of my point of view characters identify as lesbians. Elise deals with OCD. Poor girl is so stressed out. Like she's just trying her best. Layla is my little literally little like they have a height difference and Layla is smaller and she is incredibly so so feral she's like so angry and just so violent love her loved writing her loved writing her and her little fits of blood rage and then when I was writing Elise I'd be like this is exhausting but Elise's scenes are so depressing this book <laughs> some more fun parts and jokes that I had to cut and I was like uh oh there go the fun parts <laughs> Oh, my camera stopped recording. I don't know where I left off, but I was asking, do you have any reading goals for this year? I just had like a basic goal for last year. My goal was really just to read more intentionally, mindful of the books I'm choosing to read and more mindful about how I'm like consuming the content, I guess. Even though I read less books last year, I read so many good books that I feel like genuinely changed me in some way that I've learned is my new favorite feeling while reading is not just getting sucked in but kind of the opposite and like almost feeling like radicalized but like I'm into the book but I'm also so just being introspective about myself like while I'm reading like it's a really engaging experience. I also have a picture of Beyonce. How does it look? I think this is pretty great. I think I did a pretty nice job and I think my shelves look great and I'm excited about it. I'll probably play around with it a little bit more and figure out what I like the best, but this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I hope 2024 continues to be wonderful for all of us. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.